And so I want to begin by trying to convince you that the secret of human success is not our intelligence, that we have a process that makes us smart, that gives rise to our intelligence. So I want to start with dipping into the files that I call the Lost European Explorer files. And uh, these are cases in which explorers got trapped in environments where hunter-gatherers routinely live in, and we get to see if they can survive with their big brains and, and ample hubris. So the, uh, the case I want to I wanna point out is the Burke and Wills case. So if you're from Australia, you've definitely heard of Burke and Wills, the first Europeans to go across the interior of Australia. So they started here in Melbourne, and they go up to the Gulf of Carpentaria. Um, now, this was a, uh, uh, an expedition launched for both exploration, we want to find out what's in the interior of the continent, but also the possibility of running a telegraph cable from there to there. It was extremely well funded, uh, so they even imported camels from India because they, they thought they would be good in the desert. Now, crucially, a bit of information about Australia. So, Australia, I mentioned it was colonized 60... Yeah. Was colonized 60,000 uh, years ago, so it was full of hunter gatherers. So no agriculture had ever emerged in, in there until, until the Europeans arrived. So there's two different expeditions. One group of four men takes off from Cooper's Creek to make the run. Another resupply group is going to meet them in Cooper's Creek. These guys take 12 weeks of food and they head up there. Now they don't actually see the Gulf, but they kind of smelled the salt air, found some briny water, and declared victory because that was eight weeks into the trip. So they're, if you're doing the subtraction, they've only got four weeks of food left. Things start going poorly and they start, they run out of food, they have to eat their pack animals, they're having trouble finding food, going very slowly. These guys are waiting for them, and the deadline comes when they have to leave and they're not, they're not supposed to stay any longer. They decide to wait another month, uh, and still these guys don't arrive, so they leave early one morning. Later that same morning, Burke and Wills come in with uh, uh, one other guy. They lost one guy along the way who died, so they have three guys now. They decide they've just missed these guys, and they're not going to be able to catch them. So the leader, Burke, decides their best chance is to head for a police station, or a police station and, and ranch. At a, at a place prophetically called Mount Hopeless. Uh, so these guys start following Cooper's Creek, and that's going pretty well. Uh, oh, so I should mention that they were able to resupply at Cooper's Creek, so they have a little, little resupply. They're going along Cooper's Creek, and they end up getting trapped because their last camel dies in the mud, and there's a stretch of uh, desert that they need to cross in order to get to the ranch and police post. So they can't make the run, so they're, they're sort of marooned along Cooper's Creek for, the, for, the, for their lack of ability to find water in the desert. Now, they're struggling to catch fish or hunt, uh, but they find they're able to possibly survive, and things are looking hopeful, because they get gifts of fish from, from the local aboriginals, the Yawantru tribe. And when they're in a Yawantru tramp, they notice them making nardu cakes. So the nardu cakes are um, this sporocarp. So you gather up these sporocops, and the women were grinding them. So Burke and Wills headed out, and they managed to find some of these, and they ground them, and they ate them. So it seemed like they were going to do well, because they're getting enough calories, and they're getting these gifts of fish. But when they were in the camp, what they didn't notice is that the women actually use a, a sophisticated uh, processing. So they grind them, leach them, heat them, and then only eat them with a mussel shell. You can't let an organic substrate. Yes? What year, roughly, or decade is this? Oh, 1860. Okay. Just said that. Um, or they grind them, leach them, and bake them in ash. And uh, because if you don't do that, nardo turns out to be toxic and indigestible. In particular, it has an enzyme called thiamese which depletes the B1 in your system, you eventually get a horrible disease called beriberi. So uh, William Wills, a good Victorian of his time, was actually writing in his journal as he experienced these symptoms. And so you, you can actually read it online. It's, it's quite amazing. Um, so Burke and Wills eventually die. They basically poison themselves and starve to death at the same time. The third member of their group, King, wanders delirious off into the bush, but is rescued by the Yawantru, and eventually gets rescued by a team that came from Melbourne. Okay, so. What this and many other tales like it tell us is that despite months actually in the outback with, with supplies in, in order to prepare, these guys couldn't figure out how to survive as hunter-gatherers. They couldn't figure out how to survive in the environments in which we evolved, which, we, which humans have lived in for 60,000 years. So no specialized mental modules fired up, no instincts gave them the ability to figure out what they needed to know, and no general intelligence helped them figure it out and they couldn't find water or identify edible plants. Now you might think, well, that would be pretty hard to do. No animal could do it, except some of their camels escaped. And now the interior of Australia is full of feral camels. Uh, because camels have, they can smell water from a mile away, and they have innate taste and sense cues, which allow them to eat the right plants for them. And so they, even in a completely novel environment, they can find the right plants, but humans can't. 
If, you know, one important thing that Burke and Wills didn't know about was something that Australians commonly use. This is a plant called Spiniflex. And if you break these off and you smash them, you get these little crystals off of it, then you can heat them and it makes a resin that's as strong as cement once it hardens, but soft and pliable when it's heated. So that, that's really useful for making tools. Okay, so they, and they, so they couldn't hunt or uh, uh, hunt effectively, make spears or make fishing hooks. But this is something any local adolescent could do. So you can ask the question, what was missing? Well, what they were missing is what the adolescent gets, which is this download of a uh, vast body of cumulative cultural information that has built up in it, non genetically uh, in this whole system of culture and inheritance over generations. So they didn't get that, so they can't survive. So, this is something that really makes humans different. It's going to be the main, the main thing I'm going to be emphasizing as I go along here. But I want to come at this intelligence.